Greetings again, my friends. Welcome to this children and youth time of worship. And so we're going to worship God through scripture, through meditation, through singing, uh, through like word proclaimed, like we read the Bible, but we also chat a little bit about it. Uh, so we're going to do both of those parts. And so I'm uh, glad you all are tuning in and viewing this. Thank you for doing so. I'm also grateful for the improved weather, which I'm sure you all are improved for, because at least now maybe you are getting outside. You might not be going far, but at least you're getting outside, which is a welcome change and a welcome new environment, as opposed to being inside the house for all the time that we've all been inside the house. So, greetings, greetings, thanks for being here. We're going to get started uh, with a, uh, another fun kind of out-of-the-box welcome song. So this is, I'm going back in the Wayback Machine for this. So I was telling Holly, like, I think I played this song last like 20 years ago, maybe, <laughs> uh, give or take. And so uh, we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me, but we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me, quote unquote, rock and roll style. And so it's a call and response kind of jazzed up version of your familiar tune. So you are by all means encouraged to dance. Um, there's a little part that goes like, uh, 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 uh. You can definitely like shimmy to that if you would like, like a little shimmy. If that's an awkward shimmy, that was intentional, not unintentional. <laughs> it was unintentional, I'm just awkward. Um, so uh, definitely feel free to move and dance. Uh, and so I'll sing, and then you sing with Holly, and she'll sing a lot better than I will, but, you know, that's okay. Luckily, my self-confidence is in other things and not my singing ability. All right, here we go. Jesus loves me. Before we started, like how we were gonna do it, I couldn't even 
remember like the real way it was played because I'm, I'm playing the, the real way, the hymnal way. I couldn't even remember the melody because I only had that melody in my head and then a different melody that I was playing on my guitar. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, no, I can't come with it. Anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, all that to say there's lots of fun ways to sing familiar things. Uh, that are encouraging and exciting. So, uh, we're going to open with a time of prayer, then we will get into a little scripture, we'll get into a little meditation, and then a couple more songs. Let us pray. Lord God. Lord God. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for loving us first. Your son Jesus lived and died. Your son Jesus lived and died. And was raised up. And was raised up. So that we might learn a better way. So that we might learn a better way. Give us the Holy Spirit. Give us the Holy Spirit to help us honor and glorify you. To help us honor and glorify you in all that we say, think, and do. In all that we say, think, and do. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, we've been working through kind of like, what do I do? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen that Veggie Tales with Junior Asparagus. What do I do when I'm so, so scared? So that's kind of what we're doing. We're just not doing the Veggie Tales version. Uh, dealing with fear or anxiety as we continue to uh, and endure and go through for our own protection and for everyone else's, frankly. That's the thing we got to remember is that we're protecting other people when we stay inside, even though it's <sighs> tedious at best. Um, so we're thinking about others, and uh, that might, again, especially when others may not be feeling well, if we know people who are not feeling well or are struggling with it, that may also lead to anxiety as, um, or fears as we've seen our caseload increase here. So uh, we said that, I said that the, the best thing that we can do is to be prepared, and so that's why we worked on um, memorizing a bunch of things. And so like the sermon is different every week, for example, if you come to Sunday worship, the sermon is different every week um, because we need new things and we need to innovate and God needs to, and God is alive and God is dynamic, so God is still speaking. Um, but we need some consistency as well and we need things to just be normal and regular and you know, not everything needs to be routine, but a few routines are not the end of the world because they're familiar and they're safe and they're comforting. And so um, memorizing scripture, Knowing familiar hymns, um, knowing familiar songs, they don't have to be songs, praise songs. Um, all of these things are comforting and uh, things that can calm our anxieties or our fears when we need to refer to them. And of course we suggested you memorize the scripture, Psalm 56 verse 3, when I am afraid I put my trust in you, Psalm 56 3, when I am afraid I put my trust in you. That's another great way to feel comforted in the midst of um, anxiety or fear. There's there's other scripture verses that I refer to um, when I'm feeling that. Uh, you might talk to grandma or grandpa and they might come up with Psalm 23 and have it completely memorized. That's another great way. Um, another great passage to remember. And there's a couple different songs that we can sing. And we can sing through the whole thing. I got a couple different songs that I'd be happy to teach you that help us memorize that scripture. Um, if you remember the song, know the song Created Me. That's Psalm 56. Yeah, I think that's Psalm 56, creating me. Um, clean heart, oh, oh God. Uh, so there's lots of ways that we familiarize ourselves and, and memorize scripture, even if it's not directly wrote. Sometimes we do it through song. Another thing that we do on a weekly basis that we are very familiar with and have memorized, and again, we do that for comfort and for uh, routine and, and feeling steady, feeling anchored, is the Lord's Prayer. And so we've been working our way through the Lord's Prayer and uh, examining how each little segment is encouraging or um, helping us to uh, feel calm and secure in the face of fear or anxiety. And so um, last week we talked about give us this day our, our daily bread. And uh, so I'm not going to rehash that. You can pull up last week's if you need to remember and forgotten what I said. So the next part in the Lord's Prayer is and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now, this is the trickiest part of the prayer because a couple reasons. One, just for our own verbiage in the Presbyterian Church, not everybody knows what a debtor is, and that might be really confusing to you, especially as a young person, especially a young child, even into the high school age, if you're watching uh, what a debtor, what? Hmm? And then secondarily is if you go into more of an ecumenical setting, ecumenical means lots of different, um, we're all Christians, but we're different variations of Christians. So Catholics or 
Baptists or Lutherans or Methodists, um, th it, the prayer might get different <laughs> at that point in time. And some people, you may hear some folks say, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Um, the PCUSA itself, in an effort to uh, help us understand debts and debtors, has recently released um, a reprinting of the Lord's Prayer for worship in which we have permission if we, if we desire to say and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Um, so, <laughs> whichever way you have it memorized is fine. None of them are wrong. Um, what we're trying to do is convey the idea of what Jesus is trying to communicate and then how that is of comfort. And here's what he's trying to convey. Forgiveness to us comes first. And in response, we are asked to forgive those who have harmed us in some way, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. The world's a broken place in general, unfortunately. Mom and dad make mistakes. Grandma and grandpa make mistakes. I make mistakes. Pastor Eddie could say something out of turn and hurt your feelings by accident. Totally by accident. I didn't do it on purpose. I, I hope you believe me. I would never do it on purpose. Um, and so what, what, what we're encouraged to do is if something like that happens, in the same way that you have received forgiveness, you are asked and encouraged to respond to God's forgiveness by forgiving mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, pastor, Eddie, whomever it is that wronged you in some way or shape or form. Because it's... It's an appropriate response to such magnif magnificent grace. Also, it's appropriate because, now for our younger kids, this is gonna go straight over your head, but for our, young, our, our, our older kids, our teens, you may have recognized and felt this before. You may have realized that if someone has hurt your feelings or called you a name or whatever, and you have not let go of it, it can start to, the word, warp you. You start believing the lie that has been told. Right? If someone's called you ugly, if you don't let that go, if you don't forgive that, again, not, not to say that, that what that person did is okay, that's not okay. Forgiveness in the sense of if you don't let that go, you're going to keep hearing in the back of your head, oh, yeah, I am ugly. That kid called me ugly. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. No one's ugly. Not a single one of you. Not me, not Holly, nobody. Nobody's ugly. But people are going to call you that. People are going to call me that. Forgiving them is not about saying what they did is okay. Forgiving them is about saying, I don't believe your lie. I refuse to believe your lie. I forgive you, I let it go, so that I don't think of myself that way. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I tried to put it in language that was <laughs> familiar and approachable. Um, so that's, that, that, that's an encouraging thing, you know? And, you know, and here's how that relates to if I'm feeling afraid or anxious. Maybe someone has called you a scaredy cat before, or, you know, made fun of you for being afraid. Why are you afraid of everything? You're not afraid of everything. You're not. You're reasonable. <laughs> There's some things that are appropriate to be extra wary of. To be ca you're cautious. That's okay. It's totally fine to be cautious. So. This is encouraging, if we're afraid or anxious, in two ways. God has already taken care of us. This is, I was talking about this on my daily video for the adults. This is the weird part of being where we are in time and in history. You're covered, you're taken care of, it's done. But 
we're living in the not yet. It's not yet done. It's, it's promised. It's guaranteed. It's done. But it's not quite yet done. And it's just this weird paradox we live in. I'm sorry, I can't make it any... It's not easy. Um, but that's the comfort. If you're anxious or fearful, there will come a time where it, it, it's gone. Doesn't matter. You're forgiven. It's, it, all of us are. Resurrection's real. Redemption's done. So, um, you can feel encouraged in that. Okay. Amen to that. We're going to go back to meditation this week. Took a couple week break, and I just feel like it would be a good time to go back to meditation for a little bit. So, I'm going to encourage you to sit in a chair um, with your back upright and feet on the floor. Or if you're standing like me, that's fine. You can, but don't 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 lock your knees. Be be loose. Um, rest your hands on your lap, palms down. Um, if you're standing, have your hands. In a relaxed posture, loose. Close your eyes. And if your mind is busy, roll your eyes up and back to help you focus. As you begin to kind of silence the background noise. Begin to scan your body for areas of tension. I would start at your toes and slowly work your way up. Toes, feet, ankles, knees, stomach, if you do, maybe your stomach's upset, up into your chest and lungs, into your shoulders, your neck, your head, your face, and as you identify a tension spot with your mind focused on that tension, Take a big deep breath into three. One, two, three. And slowly release two, three. Breathe in. As you continue to breathe deeply, bring your attention to that breath, that life-giving, life-sustaining breath. Notice as it passes through your nose, down the back of your throat, fills your abdomen, and then your chest. yourself, not out loud, say in your mind, be still and know, and on the exhale, that I am God. Be still and know. fast-paced culture. Keep breathing. And as our culture continues to work at a fast pace, we see tension and anxiety rise. We see stress-related illnesses rise, like high blood pressure, stroke, God, we invite 
puts us into these moments of breathing slowly, rhythmically, repeatedly. are safe and secure in the comfort of God who gave us this breath to begin with. We don't need to go fast. We don't need to go quick. We can take these moments and breathe. Be still and know Pause the video and keep going if you want. Don't stop on my camera. God, thank you for this time that you have given us this space that you have given us to slow down. To slow down and sing fun songs, to slow down and reflect upon the magnitude of the prayer where some taught us can abide with us and keep us calm in the face of fear or anxiety. Thank you for the space we've had to reconnect with you and with ourselves through our breathing. Lord God, may our sacrifice of praise that is forthcoming be pleasing unto you. May our song regardless of whether it's in key or on pitch, be a joyous, joyous sound to you and a joyous proclamation of our hope in you. All these things we pray in the powerful name of I am who I am, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For our first song of the remaining two, uh, high school group, you are familiar with this one, Everything Glorious. And then for our second one, if you are a Sunday service churchgoer, it will at least be familiar. You may not feel like, oh yeah, I know that right away, but it'll sound familiar really quickly and you'll catch it. It's not hard, you'll catch on the best. Okay, Everything Glorious.
far down, I was missing that ice cut. Ah, there we go. And all the people, no, not and, there's no and at the front of the song. I'm like, God dang. It's in, all, the, it's in the words, it's in the lyrics. I know. I, it's not know. the title. I know. All the people said amen. One moment. <clears throat> okay. You count or me? You. Me.